Hi everyone, it's Jane Lambert here from A New Dawn Training and I'm coming to you live tonight on what is Mental Health Awareness Week. I wasn't aware of that, I must admit, until this morning because I always thought that Mental Health Awareness Week was in October. But this week it's what it, it is what it is and consequently hi karen that's what i'm going to be talking to you about tonight obviously we're going to deal with with mental health and how you're dealing with your mental health what is becoming really apparent is that people are getting more aware of their feelings and their emotions which is no bad thing and consequently having spoken to other mental health professionals i'm going to actually look at my phone and give you the details um hi karen 55 percent of people have said they've been talking to their counselors about being lonely and you think well how can we be lonely when we're at home but that just proves to you that lots of people are feeling lonely you can be alone in a crowded room and feel lonely 48% of people have spoken about worries regarding schoolwork with their kids. And we talked about children and how they're dealing with things last week. 42% of people have said they are speaking quite often to their counsellor about family relationships. And bearing in mind that actually that is the most prevalent how are you feeling today how are you feeling in a time of shutdown are you feeling anxious because it's okay to feel anxious it's okay to feel overwhelmed it's okay to feel depressed or even now clients are saying they still feel shocked about how things have been handled by the government, and so on and so forth. So it's okay to feel anything and everything. It's okay to feel how you're feeling. It's okay to feel tired. Lots of people are experiencing tiredness, and the tiredness is to do with trying to cope with their social anxiety. And recognizing it is the first score so how are you coping are your thoughts your feelings and your behavior different i saw today for two minutes the news and i do wonder how it's affecting everybody because too many children seem to know far too much about this virus now there's one thing to tell them but when they're three, four and five, just how much are they listening to? So be careful, be careful with what your kids hear. And think, right, okay, when I'm listening to the media, what is it teaching me? Is it teaching you to be frightened? If that fear inside you had a voice, what is it actually saying? So think carefully about it. And I would say to you right now, whatever you're feeling is fine. Absolutely anything you're feeling is fine. Consequently, when you look at today, allow how you're, you allow yourself to feel whatever you've felt and accept it. One of the first things that I teach my clients to do is to acknowledge how they feel, to accept it, and let it exist in our minds. Let it sit there for a while, because tomorrow other thoughts will be in there as well. And your feelings will accompany them. So your behavior is a reflection of today's thoughts, feelings, and behavior. And it will be the same tomorrow. So it's okay to feel just as you do right now. One day, when the corona fog has cleared, and it will, 
we will look back and realise that our days had some magical qualities and it might be quite difficult for you to see them at the moment but the type of magic that we see long after the trick has finished so think about watching a magician and we will lose some of the memories and we'll hold on to others but we won't forget that beautiful spring sunshine those glorious weeks we've had of sunshine yes we've had a, a couple of miserable days but they're still allowing us to get outside we will have, have time alone again but it will feel different because we can choose to spend our time alone then rather than it being given to us and forced upon us and we will sleep and the sun will rise again but we won't dwell on all the bad drama is that something you're doing at the moment are you dwelling on all the bad things that are happening around you because that is easy to do then we miss the sunshine when you go on a walk are you going where you know there's going to be lots of people but then you moan about it that's your choice find somewhere where lots of people are choosing not to go when i walk the dogs i go on a totally different route to my husband who will come back moaning about the number of people on the canal path i've chosen not to go that way i don't see lots of people then so think carefully about how you're spending your time and bear in mind that we will sleep and the sun will rise again and it will be another day tomorrow we won't worry about being the perfect homeschool mum or dad we won't worry about failing to be our best because everybody is trying so hard to be perfect and the perfect person hasn't been born yet so you're not going to get there are you we will remember that some days it felt like we moved mountains and other days you may find you've just sat on the uh, sat on the sofa and watched television we might have missed our footing sometimes on those mountains but actually we we've, we've got back up and we've carried on and we have to remember for every day that there was a first there is also a last so this will come to an end just the same now i think we have to remember that we will turn a page on the chapter of coronavirus at some point and it will be closed before we realize it 2020 was or is a raw undiluted and unedited version of a year with many outtakes lots of things will seem to go wrong but lots of things have gone right as well it's making us realize what really matters to us a coffee with a friend dinner with family being able to see your children your grandchildren your parents without worrying about whether or not you can give them a hug i know people are still struggling desperately with that are you one of these people what are you doing to help yourself i spoke to somebody the other day about her children and she's been a client of mine and her little ones are suffering desperately and one of the things that i've spoken to other moms about is organizing a messenger like a little party for their kids so contact some other mums and get your kids to actually interact and and have a have a play together at the same time i know it's not the same but it's the best you can do at the moment whether it be let them all be cooking at the same time and then let them all eat cake at the same time later on that afternoon let them make a picnic and go and sit in the garden and they can all sit and talk to each other whilst they're having their picnic there's lots of different things that you can do but one of the things that i've really noticed is that we've really felt love for our fellow man and woman 
we were seen, we were amazing, and we were enough. Hi, Vicky. Now, when we are feeling like we are enough, our self esteem starts to rise. And unfortunately, that isn't something that's happening with lots of people. Not working is causing a lot of anxiety, a lot of boredom. Now, if you're bored, please come around to my house. I can find you lots of jobs. But we know that that's not possible. So find something to do. It really doesn't matter at the moment how you're filling your time. Listen to music, read a book, do something crafty, do some, make some art. But we are all making these choices and we are making dozens of them every day. And we realise that we can change our circumstances or we can accept them. What are you not happy with at the moment? Because if it's that you're not happy about how you're filling your time, why not? What can you do about it? Yes, there's still lots of things that are not within our control. I couldn't believe the photograph I saw of another part of Derbyshire over the weekend where despite people being told not to go into the national parks, because let's be fair, the cafes are closed and the toilets are closed and the second one is far more important than the first, people still flocked. That's what a release of the lockdown has done. People need to get out. And I feel that. I truly do. But I'm not taking a chance. So what is within your control? How far you go? Another thing that's within your control is perhaps to look at goals that you set around the end of December, the beginning of January, because your goals will have changed dramatically. Today, your goal might just be to get through till bedtime. You might have had a blinder of a day and actually cleared every single thing on your tick list. Or it could have been quite a difficult day and you're quite tired. So whatever your goals were, you're quite within your rights to rewrite them and then to work towards new ones. We've talked about doing that in some of our sessions, my clients and I. But the unexpected can and does happen as we found out. So how can you change things for yourself? If you can't be happy unless things are different, then you're gonna stay stuck in your feelings as they are right now. And that's your choice. That's your choice to feel miserable. Or how about thinking it is what it is? Now, what can I do about it? So, for example, if today was your first day back at work and on the way to work you got a flat tire, and then by the time you get to work, or you've let your boss know, but you're late and you're irritated, and just being back at work and worrying about keeping your distance and everything else, everybody seems to irritate you. By the time you get home, you are an utter delight to live with. Hi Claire. Now, when you get home, you lash out at your partner and then you ignore them all, all evening. What was the actual problem? Was it the flat tire? Was it the people at work? Or was it your emotional reaction to what has happened? Do not become a slave to your emotions. It's not worth it. It will make you miserable. And things are not always going to go your way. I know people who are making the most of working from home, taking that extra exercise that they can, spending time playing quizzes and things in the evening with with their friends but I also know people who are feeling quite miserable and almost depressed about not having anything to do. When things get on top of you let the incident pass then decide how you want to feel and I found it it helps to not get angry 
If you are held up in a traffic jam, for example, and it might seem a while since you've been in one, but I don't get het up if we're in a traffic jam. I will put some music on and I will sing at the top of my voice and I don't care who listens, who hears. Many times when I had my uh, car with a, a soft top, I used to drive with the top down forgetting that people could hear me sing and the times there's been a <laughs> by a van driver at the side of me. So that way, the way I feel when traffic begins to move again, prepares me for what's coming next. I'm in a better mood because I'm not in control of the traffic. I'm only control, in control of me. So if you want to change how you feel, you have to change your thoughts and your behaviours. Don't let a traffic jam stop you from travelling down the road to feeling more happy. Nobody's saying that you're going to feel full of the joys of spring all day and every day, but you could be feeling better than you feel now. Remember, the amount of discomfort you feel correlates to how resistant you are to change. Change isn't easy. We know that. We've talked about it. It's very uncomfortable. But think about last week. Some days did it feel like you were walking on a tight rope? This world drives us crazy if we let it. It's a constant balancing act and we are all in the thick of it. Just trying to, trying to find people and places and things to hold on to. And that way we won't lose what's left of our precious minds. Remember, there have been three stages to this pandemic, pen, pandemic, and in the beginning, it was all about survival. But are you still glued to the news? Are you still feeling scared of the unknown because we keep finding out little bits more about this disease? Are you feeling tired and unproductive? And I must admit, that's how I felt this morning. Are you just trying to get through the day? Are you feeling powerless and sad? These are all things I've heard clients say in the past week. Are you feeling angry? Angry that you can't go about your week and your weekend and do what you wished? Are you worried about everything? Because actually that makes you feel quite uncomfortable in itself. Or are you now at the acceptance stage? Are you savoring the little things? Are you happy with the new routine that you've got? Hi, Carol. Are you limiting TV and radio bulletins? That's been one of the biggest and best pieces of advice that I've given to any client and anybody who's contacted me through Inspire because it makes us less stressed. Are you sleeping better now? Are you letting go of what you can't control? One of my clients has slept for the first time in quite a while and it followed her beginning to run and get into a routine. And she found that this has been really good for her. Hi, Richard. Are you enjoying the outdoors more? You don't have to be going very far. Are you becoming more tech savvy so that your work and your family meetings are online now? I've had to. I mean, I didn't know Zoom existed until I joined Inspire with Sam. Then we will go into the third stage, which is growth. Are you helping where you can with other people? I know that I am. I've got new people that I'm speaking to two or three times a week who they are not actual clients yet, but there is a chance they will become so. I've helped people in some of the shops and held my breath while I did so. 
Do you feel more connected to loved ones or actually when you speak to them, are they snapping and they're irritable? So actually they're not at the same stage of this pandemic as you are. Are you feeling hopeful that we are going to come towards an end with it? Because we will get there. Are you focused? I'm quite focused on next year now. It almost feels like in lots of ways we're writing the best part of this year off. I've spoken about football and the remainder of matches. I've spoken about gigs and festivals that we know now aren't going to happen. But do you feel confident about next year? We are a resilient people and we are strong so we can get through this. Are you looking ahead to the future? Are you planning next year's holidays knowing that this year probably isn't going to come out about? Are you appreciating the time at home? I work from home. So being quite honest, my routine isn't changing very much at all. My husband is a trucker. He's still going to work. But for other people, everything is so different. Are you feeling calm now? Are you living in the present moment, just enjoying the day when you get up? Are you being patient and kind to others? Remember, Mental Health Awareness Week, and they want us to be more kind. So maybe it's time to check up on neighbours that you've not seen for a few days. Perhaps put a card through the door and just say you're thinking of them. It doesn't have to be some big, extravagant, expensive flourish of activity. It just needs to be, I'm thinking of you and I hope you're okay. One of the things that became very prevalent this week is that lots of pe people are still feeling very frightened. So fear is a choice, even if you don't feel like you've got one. And we can try and avoid how we feel and ignore it and blame other people and deny it. But that leads us to high anxiety, high stress levels, panic, and even more fear. Or we can try and run away with our thoughts. And actually, we can do that by focusing on something else and encouraging our children to focus on something else and to plan ahead and to prepare. And that makes us feel better because we're taking action and we are protecting ourselves and we're, we're healing our our, in, our inner selves and we are enduring what is happening for some people they are frozen they are in they are literally frozen and they are feeling frustrated and still stuck and isolated and uncertain and that leads to blind panic and even higher levels of stress and anxiety so think about where you are at the moment. Are you not talking to other people? A client told me, this staying at home is bloody hard work. And it was because he had to refocus and to adapt to what was happening. He would turned a corner nine months ago. He'd struggled for years, both physically and mentally. And he was stressed about lots of things. There was lots going off in his life, some of it his own making. But he bottled everything up and it made it ten times worse. After all, men don't talk about their feelings, do they? The number of times I've heard that. Out of the blue, this guy had a heart attack. It hit him hard. Now he's managing his life better and with a lot of help, his, his health is re, rebuilding. His fitness levels are improving, but mentally it's taken him much longer. On the outside, if you looked at him and he walked past you in the street, he looks fine. But just because he looks fine, it doesn't mean he was fine. He's a great actor 
and he puts on a brilliant mask. He's had some real dark and negative thoughts and he felt worthless and useless. He hasn't been able to go back to his old job full time and that's really affected his mental health. So when we talked about it, he realised that he tried to block all these thoughts out, but that actually caused him to lose his temper with his loved ones and they were only trying to help him cope with things. The thoughts had, begin, had begun to actually affect his life when he was at work, never mind about just being at home. And he knew he had to admit that he didn't feel right. And he felt ashamed and embarrassed about not coping. But actually, he went out for a walk over the weekend and the thoughts went with him like little leeches he realised they were attached to him. And all the enjoyment from that walk, they were sucking it out of him. Because after all, the weather was beautiful. He could hear the bird song, but he still didn't feel happy. And finally admitted he needed to come back to therapy again and have some regular help again. Now he's realised that his family, his mates, his boss and I are here to help. We're here to be kind. Talking is a fantastic healer. So whatever you're feeling about the pandemic and lockdown, talk. It's hard at, her, at first, but talking is a fantastic healer. So stick with, with it because it does get easier. People are like me. They will listen. And people like me don't judge. So you are not alone. And it's okay not to be okay. It's become almost a cliche that now. But it's true. You can't expect at a time like this to be on the top of your game every day. All you can do is the best you can do that day with the tools that you have available to you. If you aren't coping, contact me. I'm Jane Lambert. My company is A New Dawn Training. Or contact me through Inspire. If you send a message, put it for my attention and one of the team will make sure it gets to me. Take care of yourselves over the next few days. I'm not convinced we're at the end of shutdown by any means yet. So I'd like you just to take some time and take self-care. Treat yourself like your best friend. Give yourself some self-love. Eat some nutritious food. Stay well hydrated and get outside safely when you can. Your mental health matters more than anything. So if you're worried, share your worries. If you'd like me to help you, I'd be only too happy to. I'm back live on air again on Thursday at 12 noon. So if you'd like to join me, you'd be most welcome. Take good care. Have a restful evening. Bye-bye.